जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी Gary bar ah yeah mm Hey hi gopi janavan ba Gary bar ah yeah gopi सौर नंदन भजा धन हन झमून थियरा मून झमून थियरा मून धीर हार माधवाज बिहारे Radha Madhava, Unja Viha, Hedhaya Radha Madhava, Unja Viha, Hedhaya Radha Madhava, Hedhaya Gopi Janavalava, Giri Vara, जन हे झसौर नंदन ब्रज जन झमून थियरा झमून थियरा Everybody clap. Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare. Maharaj, you can clap too if you want. If you don't want, <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, come on, come on, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
I can't hear you. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna can't hear you. Come on. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Chant the holy name, Krishna Krishna. You'll never be the same. Hare Rama, Hare. It's not a losing game. Rama, Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you. Go Ranga. There is a good sound. Go Ranga. Hammer, hammer. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare 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 Ha ha ha, hey, Krishna. Mm -hmm. Krishna, Krishna. Nithai Gaur. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare I'm Hari 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 Go to Hari 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 Go Ranga, Abu Pan, Jai, Jai, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jai, Prabhu Pan, I am. Gor Pemarande, Hari Hari Bo, Hari Nam Shankirtan Ki Jai. If you don't do anything, just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> I mean, you can do something else if you want. But if you did that, you did everything. <laughs> Everything's in the holy name. It's everything. Complete, perfect, absolute, and all purifying. Okay, so we're actually beginning another chapter and this is chapter six. This is one of the more powerful philosophical chapters in the whole Bhagavatam. And this, this is not my statement. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you'll see the philosophy goes really, really deep. Prahlad Maharaj, you really get to understand how much he knows about the truth of the Absolute. You know, the absolute truth. His knowledge is so amazing. So here's the first verse. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Parada Uvacha Komara Aracharet Pragyo Dharma Bhagavatam Iha Durlabham Manasam Janma Tam Apya Durvam Artadam Sri Parada Uvacha Kumara Archaret Pragyo Dharma Bhagavatam Iha Durlabham Manasam Janma Tam Apya Durvam Artadam Chant Any other ladies? Okay, Sri Parada Uvacha. Parlad Maharaj said, Kumara, in the tender age of childhood, Acharet should practice, Pragya, one who is intelligent, Dharmam, occupational duties, Bhagavatam, which are devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Iha, in this life, Durlabham, very rarely obtained, Manasam, human, Janma, birth, tat, that, api, even, adruvam, impermanent, Temporary, artadam, full of meaning. So, from the, the previous verse, we heard how the Lord, Pallad Maharaj, is going to show his compassion to his friends now. And so he begins exhibiting his compassion by speaking that knowledge, which is the complete understanding of one's relationship with everything, including oneself. For Lama Maharaj said, one who is sufficiently intelligent should use the human form of life from the very beginning of life, in other words, from the tender age of childhood, to practice the activities of devotional service, giving up all other engagements. The human body is most rarely achieved, and although temporary like other bodies, it is meaningful because in human life one can perform devotional service. Even a slight amount of sincere devotional service can give one complete protection. Perfection, I'm sorry. Okay, perfection. Purport. Srila Prabhupada. 
The whole purpose of Vedic civilization and of reading of the Vedas is to attain the perfect stage of devotional service in the human form of life. According to Vedic system, therefore, from the very beginning of life, the brahmachari system is introduced so that from one's very childhood, from the ages of five years, one can practice modifying one's human activities as to engage perfectly in devotional service. As confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 240, Swalpam Apiasya Dharmasya Trayate Mahato Bhaya. Even a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. Modern civilization, not referring to the Vedic verdicts of the Vedic literature, is so cruel to the members of human society that instead of teaching them to become brahmacharis, it teaches mothers to kill their children, even in the womb, on the plea of curbing the increase of population. And if by chance a child is saved, he is educated only for sense gratification. Gradually throughout the entire world, human society is losing interest in the perfection of life. Indeed, men are like li men are living like cats and dogs, spiling, <laughs> not spoiling the duration of the human life by actually preparing to transmigrate again to the greatest species among the eight million four hundred thousand forms of life. The Krishna conscious movement is anxious to serve human society by teaching people to perform devotional service, which can save a human being from being degraded again to animal life. As stated already by Prahlad Maharaj, Bhagavatam Dharma consists of Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smarnam, Parasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atman, Nivedanam. In all the schools, colleges, and universities, and at home, all children and youth should be taught to hear about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, they should be taught to hear the instructions of Bhagavad Gita, to put them into practice into their lives, and thus to become strong in devotional service, free from fear of being degraded to animal life. Following Bhagavad Dharma has been made extremely easy in this age of Kali. The Shastras say, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nastieva, 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 Gatir Anyata. One need only chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Everyone engaged in the practice of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra will be completely cleansed from the core of his heart and be saved from the cycle of birth and death. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Tama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Thiruvischa Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Siva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm. So so Pallad Maharaj is uh, beginning his teachings. And something he is very significant amongst many things in this verse is that he mentions that from the tender age of childhood, one pra should practice devotional service. Hmm. I remember there's one statement by one great Greek uh, teacher, Diogenes, um, wherein one lady, she had approached Diogenes and said, Diogenes, I have a son and he's ready for education. Can I bring him to you? And, she, and he said, how old is the boy? And he's, she said, he is five years old. And Diogenes responded, we are already five years too late. Bring him immediately. <laughs> so even from, we understand, Garbhadan Samskar, uh, the purificatory process by which one 
can purify the womb and bring in a very, what we say, elevated soul. And then, of course, it is the duty of the parents to give them, you know, education. Of course, personal care is there, but the real education is Brahma Vidya. That knowledge which is, that knowledge which will save one from all suffering and bring one to the goal of life. And that is the knowledge of transcendent, the knowledge of our relationship with the Supreme Lord and how to practice that knowledge in day-to-day -day life. And so here it's import important to understand this, that how important it is to bring Krishna consciousness in one's life as soon as possible. It's always too late. It's always too late. Why? Because there's another factor that shows us something really quite, it's the reality of this world, although people push it away. And that is that this world is very temporary. No one knows how long they're going to live. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains in relationship to this verse, yeah, even people we see who are very young, they die. <laughs> Because the whole idea of the society is that, well, you know, I'm young and I have so many years in front of me and I have so many plans to fulfill and so many desires. And therefore, you know, especially in the in culture of India, people think, yeah, well, first you have to grow up, get in, you know, a secular education, then you get married, then you have a family. And you take care of your responsibilities and the family. And then when you get old, then you can practice spiritual life. Right now, it's important to more or less mold your life around material needs. And then there'll be time later on. But uh, as it's mentioned, uh, you know, just like we have the story of Maharaj Kadvanga. It's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Maharaj Kadvanga was a very powerful king. And he was the king of the earth. And there was a big fight in the heavenly planets. So the dev devas knew the power of, of Maharaj Kadvanga, so they asked him to join the fight. And he agreed, bringing all his powerful armies. And because of his fighting, he was able to help the, the demigods defeat the demons in the fight. And then at the end, the demigods were so pleased by the fighting of Maharaj Skadvanga, that they said to Maharaj, Maharaj, you know, we're, ha we're very pleased, we want to give you some benediction. Just ask anything. He said, I want to know how long I have left in this body. How long am I going to live? They said, because the devas also know, they also know, some of them, no past, present, and future. So they said, well, actually, you have one minute left. <laughs> and then he fixed his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord in full devotion, and then he attained perfection. So devotional service is like that, but we have to prepare for that final moment. And therefore, one doesn't know, one cannot postpone devotional service. It's not something that's, po it's the most immediate and necessary thing, why? Because it's, it can save one from all suffering. How temporary is this world? We have many examples, especially in today's society, how people live. And people die very young. I mean, I think the average age in India, Prabhupada said in one lecture, was 35 years old for a lifespan. I think in Western countries it's in the 70s, somewhere around that. But that doesn't make anyone guaranteed to live any, any length of time. So each moment is quite valuable. It says, in, as the, with the rising and the setting of the sun, another day is lost and one is closer to death, except for one who engages in hearing the glories of the all-good personality of Godhead. You want to beat death? Engage in devotional service. Prabhupada says you become immortal by this process. Immortality is actually the goal. You live forever. 
We can never live in this body forever. I don't think some of us really want to stay in this body forever. <laughs> some of us have a real nice body, and some of us have something in between. And some of us are always sending it to the repair shop, right? And it's always breaking down and has so many problems. So we have different types, just like we have different types of automobiles. You have your, you know, Ferrari and so many other things. Some fast cars, and then you have the, uh, you know, the Fords that kind of like, well, Chevys break down better than Fords, I think. But anyway, <laughs> cars that break down quite easy, or not so fast, not so good. So in the same way, we all have different types of bodies. So we think, I have a nice body, I can live, I should live long. I don't have a nice body, maybe I'll get a nice body in my next life. But... What's important is now. I'll tell you a story. You, not, you might not like this story. But anyway, I like to tell stories that people don't like. <laughs> because it has a very strong message. It's, a, it's, a, it's an ISKCON story. It's a story in Chaupati, in India, where the devotees were going to the one college, one medical college in Bombay, and they had set up regular programs for the students. And so some of the leading preachers were going, and many of the students were coming. It was quite a good attendance. And so it was going on. And finally, it was getting close to graduation for some of the students who were coming. So one of the students, he told his peers, his friends, you know, I really want to, I like this Krishna consciousness, but, you know, I really want to graduate with good marks. So I'm going to stop coming. I'm not going to come to the temple. I'm not coming anymore to the programs. I'm just going to focus on my graduation. So, and he said, well, I'll be back when I graduate. So, okay. So he left, and all the other students, they continued. Just one student left. And then uh, he really studied hard, and he graduated top in his class. The top in the entire college, very prestigious medical college. And so, after, the, after he graduated, his friend said, well, okay, you graduated top now. There's a program tonight. Devotees are holding a program at the college. Come. He said, yeah, but, uh, you know, tonight there's a, there's a party. <laughs> You know, a graduation, not a graduation party, but a party of all of those who graduated. We, we got together and had to decide to have a party. I'm going to the party. And his friend said, well, you go, we're not going. <laughs> so he went to the party, and he was dancing on the dance floor, whatever kind of dance they do, I don't know. And all of a sudden, he had a heart attack and died, 23 years old. No medical history. Completely healthy. True story. <laughs> this is a true story. I'm telling you, this is, this is actually a true story. So it sent a message, a powerful message to all his friends. They really got serious. They really started coming to the temple, chanting more and becoming more active in devotional service. But it's a real, it's a reminder that no one has, doesn't know how long Prabhupada used to say, Maharaj Pariksit has seven days. Prabhupada would say, you don't even know if you have seven seconds. <laughs> so the, the material world is like that. Padam, padam, ya vi, padam, sham. It's a dangerous place. Even if we don't die by some health problems, there are so many ways from the external environment. There was one man in America... I think he was German, but he had come to America and he had perfected his particular diet. Maybe you're aware of it. It was a, just eating fruit, a fruit diet. Yeah, he was a fruitarian. And uh, he... Jai, si, si, panchatattva, ki jai. And he... Uh, he was quite popular. He was writing articles and making public appearances describing how important it is to eat just fruit and stay healthy. 
And so after some time, they did a test on his body to check his health and his health. He was in his 40s. His health was like a young teenager. He was really super healthy, you could say, by medical standards. So one time, I think it was in California, he was giving a lecture. And so he finished his lecture and he walked out on the street and he slipped on a banana peel. Banana peel. Fruitarian. <laughs> And he fell, and he hit his head, and that was the end. Of, there was no more fruit. <laughs> and was, he, that was the that was the last uh, what we say fruit of activity he had. <laughs> he came back as a, maybe a banana peel. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, so he, at least one thing, he died healthy, anyway. That's, that's a good thing. It's good to die healthy. <laughs> now, the point is, I don't want to, you know, go on to this point too long, but the point is that time is so important. Every moment is important in Krishna consciousness. So Prahlad Maharaj is making that point to his students. They're so young. And what they're going to say later on? Prahlad, Prahlad, we want to play. We're young. This Krishna consciousness is nice. But first, we want to play. That, and Prahlad, Prahlad also, he made this statement. And they said, we, when we get old. But what did he say? Old means just before you die. And no one knows when old age will come in that eternal understanding. So he's making a very important point that devotional service it, not only that, to get a human body, as mentioned here in the translation, is very rarely uh, gotten. I mean, Prabhupada would say there are 8,400,000 species of life, and the human forms of life, especially civilized human forms of life, are quite rare. We look around, we see we have a human body, and there's so many other humans around, and we think, you know, yeah, we got a good, good number here. But how many unseen living entities are in this room now? <laughs> it's really crowded. <laughs> it's really crowded. There's so many, when we say insects, microbes, and even in your body, you have so many, when we say, germs who are also living entities. So the human form of life is rarely achieved. And to get a human form of life means that you have somehow or other now have a chance to somehow or other make uh, good of something beneficial. That means take go back home, back to Godhead. I mean, some of us might like this place here. It's called the material world. <laughs> it's not so bad. We get prashadam, you know, and you know we can do some exercise to stay healthy. <laughs> But time catches up, and no one wants to die. No one wants to die. No, no matter who you are, what your situation is, generally no one die, wants to die. And therefore, everyone is trying to live as long as they can. Why? So they can enjoy. But what is the enjoyment in this material world? The enjoyment in this material world just leaves one with a desire to enjoy more. That's all. Because whatever you're enjoying is temporary. It leaves you very soon. Comes just like sex life. The whole idea of sex life. Would you like to hear about this subject? Yeah, I mean, it's a nice subject. And people look, you know, they they read in magazines about it and they talk to their friends about it. Devotees don't talk so much about it. But devotees should talk about it because if you don't talk, Prabhupada said, if you don't talk about the futilities of sex life, our movement will become weak because we hide it, but that desire can always cause so many, many problems. But what is sex life? It's a whole big buildup of all arrangements. You get so many nice clothes, you want to look nice, you want to speak nice, you want to smell nice. You want to do so many things nice and then you get everything arrangement and you make sure you hone in on that person that that is destined to be your eternal associate in this life and then you know you're thinking if I can only do that and then I'll have enjoy 
and that's perfection of life and so so many things and then you go out and you sit in your car and you drive around and you find some lady or some lady finds some man and then they get together and they speak and then all of a sudden they're alone and then they're talking and then the lights are low and then you know they put out the cigarette of course we don't do that <laughs> They, then they get some nice drink, and then that, that prepares everything. And then the conquest. Haribo! And it's over. It's over. Oh, God, it's over. What a, it's, it was, I mean, the whole thing's over. Wow! But you think, maybe I'll try it again. <laughs> it's over so fast. <laughs> It's like years of planning, and then it's like seven seconds, maybe even less. Honey, <laughs> bro. And people, they spend, you know, they build mountains, they excavate mountains, they, they blow up buildings, they create cities. They do everything just for that few seconds. <laughs> the whole world is chasing after it. And so this is the this is material life. People are just so focused on some little insignificant. Prabhupada said, "Sex life is like an itch." Yeah, I got some itch. I scratch it, and the more you scratch it, what happens? You let I, oh, it feels good. Wow. Oh God, it's back again. <laughs> scratch it some more. Oh, it's turning red. That's all right. I'll put some cream on it later. I keep scratching and scratching, and then there's blood. <laughs> so, but if you leave it alone and don't scratch it, and at first it says, "Oh, ouch!" Oh, no, no, not gonna scratch. No, no, not gonna do it. No. <laughs> After a while, it's gone. Yeah. So that's sex life. <laughs> Just don't pay attention to it. It goes away. <laughs> After some time, of course, you have to chant Hare Krishna. As it says here, if you don't do that, it's only going to increase. It says, one need only chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Everything, everyone engaged in the practice of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra will be completely cleansed from all material contaminations. Ultimately, from the core of their higher, and ultimately go back home, back to Godhead. Because the chanting of Hare Krishna is the greatest form of happiness. But in the material world, people think this, this uh, what they call, I won't, I won't give a brahmachari class now, it's not fair. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just some itch that you have to scratch, that's all. But if you ignore it, it goes away. So scratching an itch is pleasurable? Yeah, because you're suffering. So that's the point. Everyone in this material world is suffering. So they're looking for something to relieve the suffering. So, napanyapi napasyati, it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Everyone is seeing, everyone else is suffering. And they're thinking, they're seeing it, but it won't be like that for me. It'll be different. It'll be different. So just like if you are, somehow you drank some poison, so you want to find some neutralizer, so what do you do? Grab another bottle of poison. <laughs> That's material life. They simply compound their suffering by more suffering, taking the same thing that caused the suffering and add it to that as a, a way to relieve the suffering, which just does for a few seconds, and then the suffering comes back. This is material life. When you understand that, then you can understand there's no happiness in this material world. That's why Prahlad Maharaj is saying, this human life is rarely achieved. And even a slight amount of perfection, he ends the verse, sound amount of sincere devotional service can give one complete perfection. If you're sincere in devotional service, what does sincerity mean? means that I want Krishna. That's all. 
I want Krishna. My goal is ultimately to develop my love for Krishna. If that's your sincerity, whatever qualifications you have or disqualifications you have, it doesn't matter. These things will be there, but your sincerity will cause you to, to achieve the lotus feet of the Lord. And to achieve the lotus feet of the Lord is the perfection of life. And that is devotional service like that. So, the main point I wanted to make in this verse is don't waste time. Time is so valuable. Use every moment for Krishna consciousness, and if you do that, you'll always be in the best position to uh, find happiness, and Krishna will show his mercy more and more. He sees how sincere the devotee is. Time is so important. Prabhupada used to, a couple times he did it, but I can remember one incident where he was sitting in class. It was 7.25 in the morning. He was giving the Bhagavatam class. And he said, it's now 7.25 a.m. And December 10th, 1973, I think, something like that. And then he waited, and he said, now it's 7.26 so that 7.25 a.m. on December 10th, 1973 cannot be brought back for millions and millions of dollars. No matter how rich you are, you can't bring that moment of time. So what is actually valuable? Time. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says money is, what well, we say, valuable, but, but time is precious. <laughs> time is precious. So one who actually understands what is the nature of this material world and how temporary it is will use every moment in devotional service. And that's easy. It's not really hard to do. All you have to be thinking is, what am I doing now? Am I serving Krishna or am I wasting time? And as soon as you ask yourself that question, then the next question is, what can I do to serve Krishna? Like that. Okay, so these are some points. Any questions, comments? Ooh, dead silence. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. When I was Brahmachari, uh, it was advice. Uh, you cannot tolerate whole life. Uh, if you are not comfortable, you can get married. If you are comfortable, just stay brahmachari, but don't tolerate. Mm -hmm. And that is just one thing that I have doubt about this topic. About, oh, well, that, that you can discuss with senior devotees who know you and who are also your well-wishers. And to see what is the best way. It's not a matter of ashram, it's a matter of where you can best serve. That's that's the thing. Grihe taco, bane taco, sabda hari boli daco. So it doesn't matter what ashram you're in, because ashram means place of spiritual cultivation. So in any ashram, you have to become Krishna conscious. That's it. So some people are more suited for the brahmachari ashram, and some are suited more for the grihasta ashram. And then there's some who are in between who could either go either way. For them, training is important so they can understand best how to, you know, practice their Krishna consciousness. So, therefore, that's why we have, you know, a society of echelons where we have leaders who can give guidance, practical and spiritual guidance. For questions like that, if we leave ourselves to our mind and we make a decision based on our own mind's conclusion, after we make that decision, we may also find ourselves regretting well, that decision. But getting the blessings and the, what we say, guidance of senior devotees, then you know, I've got the blessings of the Lord. I got the blessings of the Lord. Chaitanya even did that when he wanted to go traveling to South India, I think. And uh, he wanted to leave Jagannath Puri. But they told him, no, the time is not right. 
he asked Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and some of the senior Vaishnavas there, he set the example that anyone in Krishna consciousness and devotional service, if they're making some, some significant decision, should get the advice and blessings of the Vaishnavas, especially senior Vaishnavas. It's very important. Because I've seen people regret making decisions on their own after they made a decision. They, they think, oh, man. Because there's one principle you should always understand. If you get the blessings and permission of the Lord through the senior devotees like that, then even if something goes wrong, it doesn't matter. You're on the right track. But if you don't, and something goes wrong, and you might think, did I make the right decision or not? So those blessings carry you through. I gave a personal example. I was running a preaching center in Cincinnati, Ohio, in America. And uh, I had already taken sannyas, so I was thinking maybe I should fulfill my obligation as, uh, you know, traveling sannyasi. So I was trying to find someone to take over the preaching center. And no people were coming. The center was doing okay. But no one was in the position to accept the responsibility. So some people were saying, no, stay in the preaching center. Keep it open. We need you here. And others were saying, no, no, you are sannyasi. You have to go out and do your you know, dharma, travel and preach. So I was going to different persons, all senior devotees, and getting different answers. It's interesting. So finally, I came to Bhakti Tirtha Swami. I was sitting with him in his room in uh, Washington, D.C. And I was going to ask him, so I came. I sat down. It was in the evening. I explained my whole situation. And he got up, waved his hand high in the air, and said, Go out and preach! <laughs> in a very, what we say, animated way. <laughs> he made a lot of gestures. And so my thought was beforehand, I'm looking for that voice that's coming from Super Soul. And I didn't hear it before. When he said it, I heard it. I, was, I guess I was ready to hear it, and he said it in such a way that I was able to hear it. So, and then I made my decision, closed the preaching center, and that's it. So then I never regretted that afterwards because I felt I got the blessings and I got the permission. So that's just one example how we do things in Krishna consciousness. That's the purpose of a, the association of Vaishnavas. They get guidance and, and, you know, blessings, especially from senior devotees like that. But I'll tell you one other thing. You might not like this. Well, anyway, I, I like saying things people don't like. <laughs> if your spiritual master tells you to get married, you can refuse that instruction. And it's not offense only if you become Krishna conscious. Because <laughs> a lot of times the spiritual master will give you that instruction just to make you more serious. <laughs> And another one, if he tells you not to get married, and you do, I've seen that also, <laughs> then you better become Krishna conscious. <laughs> so either way, you've got to become Krishna conscious, whether you refuse or accept the instructions. <laughs> That's the bottom line. <laughs> okay. Yeah, any other points? How about our friend here? Do you have any more questions today? No? No, none today? Okay. Can I maybe try to ask yeah, one sure. more time? Uh, in Western country here, I uh, heard so many times from devotee that they come to temple very, very early. Early? In early, life? Yes. In life. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Like teenager or before that. Mm hmm and after that, they says that they uh, that they have to experience some things that they didn't have chance to experience when I was a teenager, and 
they have to pass things, go to the disco, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, yeah. everything. And uh, uh, just generally question here in a Western country, uh, do we need to experience some things before Krishna consciousness? Is mind peaceful after that or, or no? Hmm. You're not missing anything. <laughs> it's the same old thing. But I can tell you, well, one, here's the point. If we give good instructions and guidance to our devotees when they're here, they won't want it. And even if they do, they'll come back. And here's how it works. There's one group called the Amish. It's in Pennsylvania in America. At a certain age, they allow their youth to go out for one year and experience the material world. You know, they're, they're a very strong religious society. Just recently, we had some association with them. A whole group of them just, what was it? It was last summer. We sat with them and talked to them about six hours. And uh, one of the things that they do is they, they allow their young, their youth, I think, I'm not sure, 19 years old, something like that, the ages, okay, go out and try it, see if you like it. And 95% or more, very high percent, come back right away. Why? Because they're trained so nicely from the beginning of their life to practice their religion and their culture. They have their own culture within the society. That is such a strong part of their life and when they go out to the materialistic culture, they can't really identify. So they, they, they make that a part of their life. So later on, they don't regret, oh, I never went out, I never saw anything. So... If we give good guidance and instructions to people who come, they'll be fixed. <laughs> and then they, when they, if they decide to go out, they'll come back fast. Or if they, if they do go out and don't come back fast, they'll eventually come back after some time. <laughs> so the important point is education. To educate the devotees while they're practicing in the best possible way, so they get a taste in Krishna consciousness. That's the important thing. If you try to prevent them from going, they'll become antagonistic. So we allow them to go, but we also pray for them to come back and also are welcoming them any time they come back. Mm -hmm. You see that a lot with the youth that grew up in our movement. Many of them go out, and sometimes they get a profession, and they come back and they use their profession for serving Krishna. Mm -hmm. So... Krishna consciousness is voluntary, but we make it and give it in such a way that people want it. If you don't want it, it's hard. You can't force it. You have to have the that desire that I want to become Krishna conscious. I want to stay in the association of devotees. I don't want to go out and suffer like everyone else is doing. Okay. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Prahlad Maharaj ki jai. <laughs>